And let me okay. just tell you, Gashi, bro, love the album. Man, thank you. It's like a breath of fresh air, dude. Um, just the music man. that's on there. The game needed it, man. You know? The game needed new music, man. Like, new sound. The game needed a new sound. I feel like, I feel like it's the same shit over and over again. Same shit, you know? Like, no one's trying anything different. It's the same flow for the past fucking five years, you know? No one's trying anything different, you know what I mean? Shout out to the weekend, though, you know what I mean? Uh, sh well, you know, it, it did sound like this last album, kind of, so I can't really say it's totally new, but he's still doing something different, I would say. Um, right. I like Miley is, Cyrus. But this is coming from a guy that kind of started a wave years ago that's, you know, popping now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then, you, you know, then you had to dive into something different just to kind of yeah. show the versatility and that it's deeper than that. I mean, it's crazy you say that. You know what I mean? A lot of people, a lot of people that know my music know that the sound that's out right now is the sound I had in 2013. Dog, you know what I mean? You had that a long time ago. A long time ago, you know? <laughs> I, was singing, I was singing, rapping, and, you know? People would, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I think, like, when I hear NBA Youngboy, it kind of reminds me of me back in college. That whole sound thing, like, you know what I mean? I think that's, like, one of my favorite rappers out right now. It's NBA Youngboy and uh, Lil Baby. But, them boys on top of their game when it comes to that, you know? Yeah, like, I, love, I love Lil Baby, bro. He dope. But, like, besides that, it's not, I'm not really too impressed with everything else. Like, I don't really care. Like, I'm not I'm not going out of my way. Do you remember, like, when Kendrick would drop or Drake would drop and you'd be like, shut up, put headphones on, you don't want no one to talk to you, you got to be zoned out. Like, when was the last time you did that? Never. Like, we don't care anymore. Right. Because it's always the same shit. They, they hype it up, and then it's, it's a fucking letdown every time. It's, it's never... I don't remember the last time I listened to an album front to back. Dog, I had this same conversation. Like, my, me and my lady were just talking about it, and I think this project, you know, 1984, not talking because you're my man, because I'm going to tell you, like, straight up, if it's trash, it's trash. If it's good, it's good. Yeah. But yeah. this is the first album I can really, in a in a minute, that I can really listen to, like, top to bottom, and then run it back. Like, the replay value on it is there. Thank you, bro. Thank you, you so know? much. A lot, a lot of people have been telling me the same thing. Like, yo, you, one thing I love about the 1984 album is I could let it ride out. And I think that's that's the biggest compliment somebody could give you. It's like, bro, I could play that shit and let it let the whole thing ride out without having no worries on a song coming out that I don't like, you know? And I think I did that, man. I appreciate you telling me that, man. I think I did that. That was the goal. That was the aim. The next song, the next album is going to be, oh, uh, the next album is going to be not even an album because I'm going to just drop singles, single singles, like I did the first one. But like, I don't respect the artists if I can't if they don't have one album that I could listen to front to back. That's how that's how I judge artists based on albums. You know you know what I mean? Same. Can I listen to your album front to back? That's the only way I respect the artist. If I could listen to your shit front to back. Travis Scott, Days Before Rodeo, front to back. I fucking love that shit. Front to back. I love that shit. Take Care, So Far Gone, front to back. Kanye West, from the first album till Yeezus, front to back. Was Yeezus before? Oh, yeah, it was after My Dark Twisted Fantasy. Yeah, front to back. Front to back. All those albums, front to back. Album artists, front to back. Jay-Z, Reasonable Doubt, Blueprint. Well, majority of the albums, but my favorite albums are Blueprint and Reasonable Doubt, front right. to back. Big E album front to back Tupac front to back um Nas front to back um uh, Pink Floyd front to back there you go okay uh uh Queen front to back all that shit nothing but fucking smashes the Beatles front to back these are these are artists that are front to back artists. These are artists that you respect. You have their vinyls. You're like, yo, I respect this artist. Like, you know how difficult it is to make a themed album. Adele front to back. Mm -hmm. Beyonce front to back. Rihanna every album front to back. Fire, nothing but fire. These are the artists that are like the the special ones. And I feel like 
I'm, I'm fighting to be in that, in that talk, in that, in that conversation. You know what I mean? It's deeper than just a bunch of singles. You know what I mean? Can you drop an album that takes you, that takes a person into a world where they're like, damn, I just left 2020. As shitty as 2020 was, I just found a way to leave it and I, my anxiety is calm. That is what I did 1984 for. It's like, I wanted, the original, uh, the original name for 1984 was supposed to be called Nostalgia 84. You know what I mean? Right. But somebody dropped a Nostalgia album, so I was like, you know what, I got to switch it up and call it 1984. So I called it 1984. And I know uh, Van Halen had an album called 1984, but this is the new 1984, you know? 1984 was the best, the best, er, the, the best year of music, I believe. Prince, Michael Jackson, check it out. The best music that ever dropped. Bro, the first Mac dropped in 1984. Jordan got drafted. I didn't even drafted. know that. Yeah, 1984, yeah. Jordan. I know Jordan, Jordan yeah. My parents got married in 1984. Think about the most amazing things. George Michael, Prince, Pink, uh, um, Pur Purple Rain dropped. Purple Rain dropped on, in 1984. The most incredible games. Ninja Turtles, 1984. Bro, shit. Like, how, huh? My shit, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How much shit dropped in 1984 for me, to, for me to be like, yo, why shouldn't I call it that? So that's why I named it the album that. And, um, and um, yeah, I could talk about it all day. I'm, I'm in love with this album. I'm so happy. It's not about the numbers. It never was. It's about legacy. It's about purpose and finding ways to, to leave something behind that you'll remember it for. You know what I mean? A lot of artists die nowadays and their music, we can't even play it. It's, it fades out. You know what I mean? And, and, and I don't want that to happen to me. I'm scared to happen to me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but then you got artists that made a stain and, and are remembered. You know what I mean? They are forever. You know what I mean? Tupac, forever. Biggie, forever. Like, you know, Michael Jackson forever. Like, these are artists that are forever. You could, bro, I hear Michael Jackson on the radio 24-7, bro. I go all to day. Home all day, bro. Like The catalog's like, crazy. Exactly. David Bowie, like, you know what I mean? Freddie Mercury, all these artists that passed away that you could still hear them on earth. They're still alive. Like, that is the purpose for me, and that is my, that is my goal, is to be here forever in this shitty earth. As much as I can't wait to leave, and in all honesty, I can't wait to dip. To be real with you, I, I, I'm like over it. I'm over this shit. I'm like, I'm over it. But the fact that I could leave something behind that can make the world pure and beautiful and people could feel something, that makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? My nephews, my kids, whatever. If I have kids, like whatever I leave behind for them to enjoy a little piece of me, my, my work. Because you can't, you could kill, you could rip my paintings apart, but you can't rip my music. Once it hits the internet, it's forever. Thanks. But we yeah. need you. We, we need you here. We need more vibes, man. Because listen, 1984 took me to a place, took me out of 2020, um, and it's what we needed. And I'm glad that you broke it down the way you did, bro. Like now that you mentioned it, 1984, fucking lit. <laughs> and um, let, let's just put. And, and I think it's awesome because you know you've always been a family guy. You've always been a good friend to me. Um, yeah. you're always good to your people. Um, yeah. Man, and, and, and songs like Mama, like really kind of giving old day to like really what you stand for. And that's like your family. And, and please just that's break it down and get in Sting to be a part of that record. Well, dog. Like you told you know, me that and I'm like, yo, you out of here after that. I mean, bro, thank you so much. I, I mean, you know, like, bro, like I'm, I am the Sting of this generation. I am the Phil Collins of this generation. Regardless of what people say, they can say whatever they want. Like my music is, sounds like Sting, the police and Phil Collins. It does, you know what I mean? It does, it sounds like that. So, so I, I, I am the, the, the generation of this. If you hear both of us on the record, it sounds, doesn't sound too. So yeah, you really got to listen close cause it's. It's yo, different, yeah. you know? But like, we literally sound like the same person. You know what I mean? So. When I made Mama, it was 2015. People don't understand. I was on the 80s wave in 2015. I started the 80s wave in 2015. I, I fell in love with it. I'm not going to say that I began the wave because you have like Chromio. You have a bunch of artists that have been doing this for a while, the right. whole 80s. But I think I leveled it up to a place where they're like, they didn't expect an artist like me to take it there. You know what I mean? So I don't give a fuck about credit, pat in the back. I don't care about that. that that's all irrelevant. Awards are irrelevant. Bullshit. Nothing means... 
it all means nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? You give credit where it's due to people, and that's good. Take it how you want it. I don't really give a fuck. At this point, I don't feel nothing. You know what I mean? So I did Mama because at the time I was broke as shit, and I thought about a lot of of uh, the things that I've been through. You know what I mean? And I always said, wish I knew then what I know now. Like, I wish I could, you know what I mean? I wish I... If, if a human being, if they could, if they could travel time and know then what they know now, they'd be a lot more successful and they'd have, they'd be a lot more happier. You know what I mean? Because they wouldn't hurt people or they wouldn't make the mistakes that a lot of us make, you know? And, um, so the whole thing started with mama that was the first song I recorded and it's about time travel, which I knew then what I know now. And Someone heard it and was like, yo, it sounds like the police. And I was like, wow, how crazy would it be if I could get Sting on it? Years later, my record, years later, five years later, my record, uh, somehow, someway, through my manager, gets to Sting. And Sting hears it and goes, wow, what an incredible record. I want to hop on it. And just like that, we have Mama featuring Sting, Gashi. And I feel like it's the legendary move. The fact that the greats, this is a Grammy winning artist, like, like this is like respected, like, like, you know what I'm saying? When, 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 um, people are creating, people created hits from his old hits. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? From Bruce World to Diddy, yep. whatever. You know what I mean? This man is the guy. This is the guy. And the guy is telling me I'm the guy. So, it's just like when you get people like that telling you, yo, you the shit, it's like, calm. I don't, let me turn the AC on, I'm getting hot. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It just, you know, it just feels like, it, it feels like, you like a weight's kind of lifted over your shoulder, like you can just kind of chill, like with somebody iconic um, in, in so many ways can just sit down and not only tell you you're great, but your song and he is great and I want to get on it. Yeah, I mean... You know, it's it's uh, it's a special moment. It's a beautiful thing, you know, and I'm thankful for it. And um, I just I just want to be remembered. I want to be remembered for my music, my art, and the things I create. I want people to remember me for that. I don't want people to remember me for anything else. You know, it's it's not relevant, you know, uh, it's a crazy world we live in. People are dying left and right and the world is full of evil people that, you know, they want to take everything away from you. And the moment you get successful, everyone's after your money and everybody wants something. So. I'm blessed enough to have had my success kind of go slowly because I think if it happened too fast at once, I would not have been able to handle it. And that's, that's a fact. So I'm super thankful that it took this long for me to become successful and I'm nowhere near where I should be at, but it feels good. The fact that I'm at a pace because honestly, Joey, you know, people come after me now and I'm bugging out. Imagine if I were to blow up and have everybody come at me at once. One time, I'd yeah. lose it, you know what I mean? And you just gotta watch out, man. You gotta play the game. And you know, it's 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 a different time we live in, man. You know what I mean? It's about TikToks and all that shit. It's not about real hits anymore. Yeah, it's and, about fast. It's about, it, it becomes disposable. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly, and you know, We've always spoke about this for years, but it's like it's gotten so bad that nobody cares anymore, you know, and music needs a shift right now. M music needs to shift right now. And I believe I'm the shift of what's what needs to happen with the sound I'm making. It's like. I need to be the example of what I want to hear. It's not it has to do, do nothing. It has nothing to do with 80s music. It has nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? It has something to do with good music. We just want to hear good music. I don't give a fuck what genre it is. We yeah. want good music. You know what I mean? And enough with the hype and the bullshit, the TikToks, the dances. Can you do it without that? Can you make your shit go without that? That's the real question. You know what I mean? Can people hear your song and just be like, damn, this shit makes me feel some way I've never felt before? Like the first time you hear Adele, hello. 
that shit make you cry. Like, holy fuck. You know what I mean? Like the first time you heard, uh, you know what I mean? The first time you heard, uh, I'll be missing you. It's a good ass song. You know what I mean? Um, like the first time you heard stand by me, you know what I'm saying? Like these yeah. songs, even the Backstreet Boys, I want it that way. Bro, like, are you fucking kidding me? In sync. What about Justin Timberlake? Cry me a river, bro. Like, what? But Pharrell. Yeah. I was just fronting. You could play that shit right now. Yeah, bro. all day. Timeless stuff, bro. Bro, timeless music. People think when I say timeless music, they always think that I'm talking like David Bowie all the time and like, like, you know what I mean? They always think that I'm talking like Beatles. And I'm nah, bro, I'm talking about the new Beatles. I'm talking about Pharrell. I'm talking about Kanye. These are the rock stars that of our generation. You know what I mean? Like, it really sucks the fact that Kanye West, my favorite artist, has made so much amazing music. He's able to fuck up now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's able to fuck up now. He's, he's given us so much. that He's cool. I don't care. I don't really care the fact that he doesn't put out that much good music anymore. You know what I mean? It's cool. Like, you've given us so much that I don't expect... You have so much going on, I don't expect you to drop a song that's going to make me say, oh, my God. You know? How would you, like, say, when you get to a point in your career where, where your music is and you're giving so much, and I feel like you're doing it so much, because you put a lot of energy, you put a lot of soul, you put a lot of heart, blood, sweat, and tears in your shit. Yeah. Um, how, how, would, how, would, how are you going to feel when that moment happens to you? Because, I mean, I feel it's going to come, and I feel like this is just what, the cusp. What? The moment of what? Like, 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 yeah, like, as far as handling and coping with, you know, success and, and somebody on a Kanye level, and when, you know, when you reach... Uh, icon uh, status? I don't know. You know what? I don't know. I don't think I'm built for it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I'm built for it. And that's just me keeping it real with you. No, that's, that's real. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I'm built for it. And that's why God's leading me slowly, slowly, little by little. Because everybody knows in the most humble way, they're not fucking with my music, period. Like, I'm just being humble with you and I'm being real with you. In the past, how many years, no one's put out better music than me. I don't give a fuck who you want to call, who you want to put up. I, we could go back and forth right now. Unless you're talking Drake, unless you're talking about the big dogs, yeah. don't compare me to anyone else because they're not fucking with me musically. You know what I'm saying? They're not fucking with me. Producing, they're not fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you hear these guys, they talk. Like, I'm producing my shit, rapping my shit. But your shit sounds so generic, and you sound like all your songs are the same, same subject matter, so boring. You know what I mean? Right. So when you hear the guys talk like the way I'm talking right now, like, yo, they're not fucking with me, boom, boom, boom. Play something that's going to be here for years and now. Because, my man, you can sell out shows, but your shit's whack. No one gives a fuck. Your shit's not being played. So you can say whatever the fuck you want to say. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about... Can you play the shit for your mother? Can you play that shit at barbecues? Can you play it at stadiums? I don't give a fuck if you sell out stadiums. You don't make stadium music. You know what I mean? What I'm saying to you is I don't think I'm built mentally to be there. I'm, I'm just slowly getting there. So I'm training myself. Because in, in the, the universe only makes you go through shit to prepare you for something else. That's your purpose. That's what life is. You know what I mean? And the world is a dark, dark, cold place. You know what I mean? And it's and it's it's a hole that will eat you up if you let it. You know what I mean? So that's what the Hollywood and the business is. is it's, 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 it's a scary world. If you're not strong enough, this will eat you up, you know? And I'm slowly, little by little, getting there. And I'm making the music I want to make. And I feel when I get there, I'm going to be mentally prepared for it but i'm be sitting on so many classics so many so much music that i'm not worried about nothing dog you feel me i'm about to be 30 years old bro my favorite rappers broke at 29 my favorite artist broke and got signed at 31 what are we talking about you know what i mean and you know what i don't like about the younger rappers nowadays how they don't respect the, the the OGs that paved the way. That bothers they call, me too. They call them old heads. But what they don't see is they're setting themselves up for failure. Then I'm telling you, they setting themselves up for failure, dog. 
the fact that a young pop artist could see or a rock artist, young rock artist could see Ozzy Osbourne on the street and cry and call him like a prophet or some shit. Like, yo, you're a god to me, dog. The fact that these young rappers cannot look at a Snoop or can't look at a Dr. Dre or Kanye or or Jay Z or 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 you know what I'm saying? Like when they meet these rappers, these OGs who paved the way for us, right? The fact that they don't have that is so heartbreaking to me because what they don't see that what they're doing is they are killing, they are killing rap. They're killing hip hop. Why are they killing hip-hop? Slowly and surely. Do you know why they're killing hip hop? They're killing hip hop because they're not letting it be timeless. They're trying to say, oh, they're old, they're the old wave. Instead of paying respect and, and letting it build. Rock stars, bro, at like 65 to 70 years old are selling out stadiums, dog. Still. Still. Dog, I saw money. Rolling Stones, uh, Billboard, the wild, like driving down the street out here. You understand what I'm saying? Why can't we see that with all these other rappers? Why are these young rappers destroying the culture and they're destroying it? And I'm not, and I'm not supposed to be talking about this because this is not my business. You understand what I'm saying? It's not, but people, day, it, people need to know this, though. Like, because I've been trying to say this for a while, day, trying a to guest. find a way to say it. I'm a guest. You understand what I'm saying? I'm a guest into, into this hip-hop world. I'm a guest. I'm not, look at me, dog. I'm a guest. You know what I mean? And I got to be aware of that, of what I'm talking about. I'm a guest. So I can't say much. But all I can say is young rappers need to stop doing that shit, cut that out, and stop paying homage and respect all rappers and all hip hop artists, because that's the only way to keep it alive forever. You know what I mean? The same way a rock star will look at the Rolling Stones or look at whoever is on tour, you know what I mean? Rather be ACDC, Led Zeppelin, or whoever it was, Motley Crue, whatever it is, and they cry is the same way you should be so respectful of the OGs, like Snoop Dogg. Bro, if I saw Snoop Dogg, bro, I'd fucking cry, bro. I'd bug the fuck out. Bro, Snoop Dogg, bro, like... I've bro, seen I Snoop Dogg. I've DJed next to Snoop Dogg. Bro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy. Dude, bro, if I saw Snoop, I'd lose my fucking mind. He's one of my favorite, favorite rappers. You know what I mean? Like, DMX, bro. I met DMX, and I lost my mind. You know what I mean? Like, DJ Premier, bro. You know what I'm saying? These are, these, favorite are, producer all time. these are people that are so special. And... I just think these young rappers need to get this shit together because what they're doing is they're killing something. So rock music could be forever and rap and hip hop can't. And that's what they're doing. They're setting it, they're setting it up for failure. And I think that that's why it should change that, you know? And then, and, 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 you know, kind of fuck me up because look at me now I'm singing, you know what I mean? I'm doing pop music because I'm going like, I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Be here forever. You know what I mean? So that's where I'm at. I'm just, I, I think, I think I'm in my own world, man, you know? I want to be like Elton John. That's who I want to be like. I want to be like Elton John. I want to be, you know what I'm saying? Elton John was always in his own category. He was always oh, in his own, own world, man, zoned out. I watched the movie and he was he was in his own world. Bro, look at this man, Elton John, bro. The number two most richest, wealthiest artist at his age right now, bro. Could you believe that? I saw that list. The I didn't know that. That's wild. Number two on there, bro. Like. Elton John, bro, that's the that's my that's my guy. That's who I want to be like. Elton John. That's the best way to say it. I want to be like Elton John. I want to be like Sting, Elton John, Phil Collins. My man Sting bought a fucking condo, sixty three million dollars in New York City. What are we talking about, dog? Yeah, it's like, like nothing. <laughs> it's like nothing. Look for money. They have their <laughs> own genres. Look, when I say Phil Collins and I say Elton John and I say all these artists. They have Phil Collins, Sting, they have their own genre. You can't put them in one category. Yeah. And that's who I am. I do all types of music. I love hip hop. I love pop. I love rock. I love country. You know what I mean? That's the music I make. I am the fusion of everything. I'm the genre bending artist. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to shift it a little bit because I, I want to take what you said and apply it to something. You, you were mentioning like how 1984 like bred so many great artists. You know, Prince had the Purple Rain. Prince even yeah. did the Batman soundtrack by himself. Yeah. Um, Phil Collins did the Tarzan soundtrack by himself. Yeah. Now you got this Wonder Woman 1984 movie. Do you feel like you should be the one of your style of music with the modern take on 
you know, that 80s vibe uh, should have probably got that phone call or, you know, to, to, to that, that contribute. Been, yeah, that would have been crazy. But I think, you know what, that, that would have been dope. The 1984 thing would have been sick. But, like, I, I, I think a woman should do that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that movie is powerful. Wonder Woman is powerful. We should have like a strong woman like Alicia Keys. Uh, we should have somebody like, you know what I mean, tap into an 80s sound. Like, you know, like, like just women. It should be all women getting together making that because it's Wonder Woman. I think, you know what I mean? Respect to all women out there. They should take that in their hands and make it theirs. You know what I mean? I think what I want to tap into is like Bill and Ted. I like that too. Yeah, I just I was no. peeping a little bit of the movie I earlier. No. I was I saw some of the movie earlier. Yeah, that's cool. But um, um the, the Lux albums here. You got G Easy on it. You got Default on it. Um, yeah, Default is a special, special, special producer. He's going to be legendary. You know what I'm saying? You got Seb Torgis. He's like the Billy Idol of our generation, of our time right now. So you got these are my best friends, but there's nothing cooler than than working with your best friends. You know what I mean? Um, like you're my friend, Joey. You're my friend. You know I me. Mean? At the end of the day, I know you're a radio dude, whatever. You're a DJ and you do all these things, but you're my friend first. You understand right. what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's like there's nothing cooler than working with your friends because I, you know, what I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It's so pure. People nowadays, they grab an album and they go straight to the fucking features. It's bullshit. They skip the whole shit and go straight to the feature. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm not going to fucking worry about what features I have on my album. I'm going to work on my friends. Listen to my whole shit. Those are my friends, bro. And another thing is when you get your elevator and you put get put on and you up in the sky, you send the elevator down to your friends. Don't be sending it to people you don't even know. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I support my friends. I'm a, I'm I'm all about family and supporting my friends. If my friends are talented, I'm putting them on. That's it. I'm not gonna be competing with them, stunting on them and stuff like that. A lot of motherfuckers grab money and get money, and then they want to go on vacation and invite their friends on vacation just to stunt on them. I don't. I'm not like that. That's not what I do. I'm not going on vacation if you can't buy your own ticket. You know what I mean? I'm not going on vacation. Got I got to find the groundwork so you could be able to afford it and come out with me. You know what I mean? It's a difference. It's a different mentality I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and the money was never the focus, you know? It's about being legacy. This is about my legacy. Look at Chadwick, bro. Like, four years of cancer didn't tell nobody, you know? That's and how and you And the know. whole team, and your whole team was solid to just keep that under wraps. You know and, what I mean? And not draw attention to him like, in, in, that, in that way. He focused on the art. He left something behind, bro. That's amazing. We could watch these movies and forever. see his forever, bro. He's, bro. It's such a sad moment. I cried, you know. Dog, that, that, that dog. It was between losing Black Panther, Black Mamba, bro. It's, it, it was tough. And when I got that, like my heart stopped, bro. Bro, like, twenty twenty is I, the I worst. I literally stopped. I got shook. But that taught me something, man. Like. That man was going through hell and didn't tell nobody. And still lived his life, bro. Like, exactly. So so watch how you talk to people. Just because they look like they going they fine and they winning doesn't mean they're not going through it, you know? You gotta be careful how you talk to people. I think that's one thing I learned out of that. You know, I learned something from that. And that's what I walked away from. I learned that. I think that's what I learned from that, you know. Same, man. God bless him. I pray, you know what I mean? I pray he's in a better world, doing better things. I pray. I pray God bless his whole family. I, my condolences to them. That story really touched me, and his story really, really affected me. And I could, but to see somebody that's, you know what I mean? It's been a while since somebody that's a celebrity affected me. That really affected me. Props to that man. He's actually helped me with my anxiety. Like, I was watching the speeches and I was like, wow, like, what a brilliant man. <sighs> yeah. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> well, look, man, uh, I, you, know, you know, I love you to death, bro. And I'm, I'm always too. here for you whenever, you know. <laughs> and anytime you know, my, my phone's always available, I definitely can't wait for this shit to be over soon. So hopefully yeah. I can head out to LA. I just want a tour, man. I want a tour. I, I know, tour. man. I know. And I'm, 
<laughs> Nothing makes me more happy than being on a tour bus with my friends. I think that's the best part about the business. It's not at the, it's not at the awards, the numbers, all that. It's about shows. Go, going on a tour bus with my friends. Yeah. It's the best. It's the fucking best. You know what I mean? I love that. I love that. I, just, I can't wait to tour again. And hopefully it's soon. My jaw's locking because of my anxiety. And I don't want to do drugs because I don't do drugs anymore. I'm, I'm trying to live clean and chill. And, and I get so much anxiety. My jaw locks. And I'm just trying to find ways to like do things to keep my mind right. And yeah, that's it. 1984 is out right now. Go get it. Appreciate it. Love you. And just, just keep me in a good light. Keep me, remember me in the light. That's like awesome. Just, you know what I'm saying? Play me in the right light. That's all I got to say is just do that. You know what I mean? That's to everybody. Keep me in the, keep me in the positive light and just understand that it was organic. You know, I wrote these shits with my bare hands. Yeah. My brother, appreciate that, man.